but you're here that's good enough that's that's right <clears throat> uh, Vikram, thank you very much for inviting me to this uh, very interesting conference. I'm glad to be here. I'm, I'm so sorry I couldn't be able to do it uh, last year, but uh, I will try uh, to share with you uh, some ideas. Uh, I've been working since a long time ago, uh, <clears throat> trying to to think about connections between theater and mediations, which are my two, my, my two occupations since I'm very young. Occupations so, uh, or passions? Your passion. No, both, both occupations and passions. If you can make and your passion your passions. occupation, is amazing. <laughs> what else do you want? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I think uh, I'm uh, I, I'm very lucky because I've I, I have found uh, well. First of all, I want to say uh, I will ask you to speak uh, slowly uh, just to understand you because I'm a Spanish speaker. I'm Argentine. I'm uh, I was born in Buenos Aires, the uh, Argentina Republic, Argentine Republic capital. Uh, I've lived uh, <clears throat> my whole life there. I live now there. And uh, we speak Spanish. I also speak English and French. But my third language is English. So uh, <clears throat> that's the only thing I want to say. No, well, just um, one second. What do I do? What, let me just see. Karina is there. She had a session before Michael's. She's also, I think, from Argentina. But she's Karina. Speaks, yes. She Hi, only Karina. She speaks Spanish. Hola. So she's, so oh. she, Karina, you want to put on your video and put on your audio? You can say hi to Juan in Spanish because she only speaks Spanish. She doesn't speak. Hola, Spanish. Karina. ¿Cómo estás? <laughs> Hola, well. aquí estoy acompañando. <laughs> muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. So. But I'm still not we, going to let you go on. I'm still not going to let you go on. I'm going to first put up what we are doing. Here. This is important. Oh, oh, okay. So basically, this is the conference. Of, of course, I don't want to talk too much about the conference. It's all up there. There's so many sessions. They're interesting topics. But Juan is going to take us through mediation as a theater. And anything that you want to tell us about the conference, if you've seen any session or not, Juan, you can tell us. Otherwise, we'll just... Well, I'm uh, very busy person so uh, unfortunately I couldn't do it just to look for for the the titles and I think they're all are, are amazing and your project is so important but I couldn't do it up to now but I will try to I will try to okay. <clears throat> so now it's all your show the theater is on and you it's your show and I'm here I'm okay. a spectator I'm a spectator <laughs> Okay, but let's let's do it like a conversation and uh, an informal conversation. I have decided not to to uh, bring any powerpoints or images. So just for, for a first opportunity to talk and to tell you and, and to share with the audience uh, what is is it all about. Uh, well, I think first of all uh, I, I, we we have a one hour. Uh, more or less as much time as you want there's no session after yours okay so okay much, okay uh, <clears throat> first of all i i'll talk about my very shortly about myself uh, my name is juan uh, jean marie in french i i, I belong to a, a, a french argentine family in, in buenos aires um, <clears throat> i'm a lawyer that that's my origin profession but I work almost uh, every time as a mediator, as a family mediator, civil mediator, and also commercial issues. Uh, I am, I'm also uh, a teacher. I, I'm a university professor. professor. Uh, I teach mediation. I teach negotiation. And I also... I'm also an, an actor and a theater uh, professor. Uh, when I began to study law, <clears throat> um, I did it because, uh, first of all, because it was, it was a traditional career. Uh, I had to do it. 
as a middle class <laughs> educated person. Uh, but I had my uh, hidden passion, which was the theater. Uh, now, uh, looking back, I can I can think what uh, what were the uh, which were the points in the common points, because theater and law talk about uh, conflict, uh, personal relations, and personal interpersonal conflicts, but the problem, at least to me, was that as I began to um, participate more and more in the university and uh, it to immerse in my career, I found that uh, the conflicts were uh, very far from uh, the, the work and the profession. I mean, uh, <clears throat> the exercise of the profession were in, in the court uh, and the people were very far from there. There were judges, there were lawyers, uh, there were people waiting for the results who, who didn't come <laughs> to an end. And in, on the other side, on the border, I was making theater, I was knowing the, the uh, human conflict, the deeper, uh, it was fiction, fictionalized, of course, but I was training and training, and I began to teach, uh, to have uh, theater groups, and I, I felt a real passion there, which I couldn't find in, in my practice of flow. I, I think you can understand, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So <clears throat> in the early 90s uh, in Argentina, uh, a big movement began uh, about uh, mediation. Uh, it was a challenge. Uh, there were two uh, women, two judges, uh, very well known here, Gladys Alvarez and Elena Hyton, uh, which uh, who went to the United States of America and then they, they brought from there some ideas, some new ideas <coughs> about the creation of mediation centers where we could uh, find the opportunity to, to work with the real conflicts. So... It's not uh, no need here to talk about the benefits of mediation because if all what you, you always talk about. But then I found my second love, I would say. And uh, when, I be, uh, when I began to, to study as a mediator, there was a theater uh, professor there uh, also, there were other professions, not only lawyers uh, from the, the psychoanalysts, psychologists, sociologues. So I, I became very interested and I, I said to myself, this is, uh, I'm like a fish in the water. This is what I like. This is my place in the world. So um, in Argentina, they, uh, there is uh, you know, there is a law who uh, establishes that it is mandatory to go to mediation before going to court. So uh, <clears throat> the government needed in <clears throat> the mid 90s, many mediators. So they needed also uh, teachers and professors. So that's why I became a mediator, a professor, and uh, I began to uh, use my theater skills in the courses and in the mediations. That's about me, just a little about me. Uh, <clears throat> I think that, <clears throat> I'm sorry, a problem in Argentina, it's my opinion, is that uh, mediation is all, um, <clears throat> court and exit mediation, it's only for lawyers. Uh, media mediators have to be lawyers. And I uh, think uh, that it's not necessary 
only to be a lawyer, but to be a mediator, you need to be a mediator. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> it has to be an independent, uh, uh, free profession activity out from the other professions. Uh, of course, law is part of it, but it's not the whole part. The conflict is not only the legal conflict, but it is the human conflict overall. And which is the, uh, the, the discipline uh, who uh, talks and who uh, researches the best about the human conflict, which is our matter, in the world and the, <clears throat> and the most antique, it is theater. Theater uh, is in the beginning of the, of the societies, of the uh, primitive societies, uh, with a ritual uh, uh, sense when, when people had to pray for the to, to have a good um, food, to, to search for food, or when they, uh, they, have, uh, they were uh, worried about the, the, the problems of the climax, all that, and uh, the theater began to in, uh, install there in the society. And also the myths, the, the <clears throat> narrations about the origins and who we are, where are we going? How can we manage with all the conflicts we have between each other? So theater is there uh, <clears throat> for, from the beginning and forever and ever. It changes, it changes. Uh, every century is changing, but if, if you think about it, theater is always there and uh, movies, for example, and cinema didn't destroy uh, the theater. <clears throat> uh, I think I will use uh, a title <coughs> of a book, uh, the um, uh, Ingmar Bergman's uh, memoirs called The Magic Lantern. The Magic Lantern is like a, an image of a lantern, the lantern of the cinema, uh, illuminating the, the human soul. I think I can, we can use that uh, phrase to illustrate uh, how theater is important to illuminate the human soul. And uh, that's why I consider it a, a good point to uh, begin thinking about that. <clears throat> many, many uh, playwrights, like, for example, Shakespeare, the, the, the big, the, the great Shakespeare, uh, talked about, uh, <clears throat> about the theater as a metaphor, a, a life as a theater. Uh, let, me, let me read something here. Uh, Life is but a walking shadow, a poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. Uh, and in another uh, play, he says, all the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and, uh, and their entrances. And one man is in his time, place, many parts. Uh, I think that uh, that uh, Shakespeare quotes uh, summarize uh, how individuals go about their daily lives interacting uh, one with one another. So uh, later in this century, in uh, the last century, uh, the 20th century, a sociologue and um, <clears throat> researcher, Erwin Goffman, uh, said, he, he has written many books and he uh, proposes that uh, we can use a theater as a metaphor of life, of social, social life. Uh, 
<clears throat> daily life, daily life is, uh, is like a performance where uh, our actions and our interactions are observed by others. Uh, there is a, a situation of interaction in which, in which there is a crossroads of um, expectations. <clears throat> there, uh, the other, uh, for example, you in this moment are my audience or the people who are there and they expect something for me and me as, as the actor expect something for the audience. So there's a relation, a theatrical relation uh, between people. That, that is what Erwin Goffman says. And so in that way, we can say that there are. <clears throat> the, the, the stage in every uh, social situation, we always have the stage and the uh, behind the scene. Uh, in this, on the stage, there are scenes, there are stories, uh, narratives and characters portrayals. So there are the, the actors or the, the person is the actor who represents the, his character and tells a story to his audience. There is like a mask. We always have a mask, like in the antique uh, Greek uh, <clears throat> theater where people uh, <clears throat> had that, that uh, fixed mask who uh, means, has a meaning in, in the etymologically, we can say that person and mask are synonyms. So that, it means that you are a person because you are showing something and you are also hiding something. So when you are behind the scene, when you turn off the computer, for example, because this is the, 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 new, <clears throat> the new stage, <clears throat> the <clears throat> uh, Century 21 stage, uh, with the virtual reality who uh, <clears throat> uh, implies or, or means a challenge for all of us, which is the new stage? Uh, how, which are the masks we, we use or we should use or we shouldn't use? So that's <clears throat> uh, to begin with, the, with this, ideas, uh, the first thing I want to say is uh, that life is like a theater. And my idea is that mediation is like a condensed or a reduced life. Everything that happens in life happens in mediation. And if, if life is a theater, so mediation is also a theater where there are characters, where there are masks, there are interactions, there are expectations, crossroads of expectations. And to use the, the theater uh, concepts, we can say there are roles. The, the main, there are many, many roles in theater, but I, I will talk about four the essential four roles, theater roles, which are actors, the audience, the director, and uh, the playwright. <clears throat> There's always somebody who writes the story to be played. There is a director or many directors who conduct the development of that situation, that drama situation, because there, there is no theater without conflict, without a drama. <clears throat> that is another element. Uh, there is an audience because 
we always have somebody who is observing us and who is uh, so uh, making the sense of what we are doing. And uh, there is, of course, the actor. There is no possibility of theater without an audience. Uh, <clears throat> any, uh, uh, now I will take uh, the great drama, uh, dramatist, playwright, and author, um, theatrist, uh, Peter Brook, who passed away uh, <clears throat> last year. Uh, he said that uh, in his book, his excellent book, The Empty Space, that every place is a theater. Every uh, a, a carpet, every garden, uh, where the children play, where the, uh, you, you don't need, you don't need a very uh, rich uh, theater to, to make a play. Every, Every, every now and there, you have the, the possibilities to make theater. So I think that we can learn uh, from uh, children because what do the children uh, every day in their everyday uh, life? They play. They play. They, they don't need... Uh, anything but uh, a convention, like a contract, maybe an implicit contract, let's do this. We are now in a, uh, say, we are sailing in a, a pirate's uh, boat. Okay, the play begins and <clears throat> there's a new reality. I think that uh, one of the things uh, we can think we can think about the importance of theater uh, for mediation is that theater talks about the um, illusion of life. Everything is a little real, uh, real and also a little illusionary. So. Are we searching, this is for lawyers especially, are we searching for the truth when we are listening the, that uh, people who are on stage telling us mediators their dramas, their conflicts, or are they are there uh, illusion, only illusions? There is something a little true, but also a little, I wouldn't say lie, but fiction, illusionary, because truths are subjectives. Uh, <clears throat> so that's why what we do in mediation is to analyze uh, the stories in the uh, narrations, in the narratives. So when a person comes to mediation, she become, uh, he or she becomes uh, a character representing uh, a, a role uh, and begins to tell he, he becomes a storyteller, but the story that person is telling is her story, not the story. And she, she's talking about facts, but she's also talking about the way he sees the facts. There's, a, um, there's an argument, there's a plot, there's a subjective description of the facts because there are perceptions of the facts. Uh, <clears throat> there is a punctuation, uh, emphasis. There are emotions in the story. 
there, there is an underscoring, there's silence, there, is, there are pauses. The silence and the pauses mean a lot. All of these are elements that we, <clears throat> we study when we study theater or we study drama, which are the, the main subjects uh, in a, a theater career. Let's see, for example, the uh, one, the, the most important, I think, is the one I said, the conflict. So in mediation and in theater, we study the conflict. It's our prime, prime matter. Uh, there are different kinds of conflict. There is the inner conflict, which is the, the, um, the warring forces, the fight inside myself between two forces. Um, <clears throat> I want to do this, but also I want to do the opposite thing. So what can I do? Do I kill, <clears throat> do I kill the traitor, uh, the dictator, or I do not do it? And all the moral um, um, interrogants, interrogants and questions that we have, like, for example, uh, Hamlet. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, sorry, you were going to say something? No, no, I was just oh. filling up the word. I was saying maybe the internal dilemma or whatever. I was just... oh, okay, okay. Thank you for helping me with the, with the English. Uh, and um, are we okay, uh, Vikram? Uh, perfect. It's perfect. Okay. It's going really well, really nice. I'm really enjoying this. <clears throat> okay. So uh, that's the inner conflict. We studied in theater, in the uh, school, uh, theater school. <coughs> I'm so sorry. I'm... You want to pick up a glass of water or something? Mm -hmm. You want to get a water? It's okay. Uh, take a break. Yeah, just take, a take, second. Take. Yeah, yeah, no issue at all. Please. Thank you. They are bringing me. Uh, the, other, the other kind of conflict we have is the interpersonal one. That is the competing forces between two persons. So the, dile the inner dilemma is all in one person and in the other person. So it's a very compl complex situation. So when I, uh, many times I heard uh, me, um, uh, professors, mediation professors, who said the mediators, mediators only um, want to know about the interpersonal conflict. And I say, it's not like that. It's not like that because we have to understand the inner conflict because in a negotiation, the, the, the most important part is that you have to make a decision. And to make that decision, do I sign that agreement or no? There's a conflict behind, behind the scene. <clears throat> and the third kind of conflict of which completes the parts of the whole conflict is the conflict with the word, uh, the word. I mean, for example, with God, with the uh, forces of uh, nature, with the circumstances, that thing that we cannot change or that thing that changed all my status quo and uh, who came to, uh, how do we say, <laughs> to, to put, all um, in the opposite side. So the, the challenge when we have a conflict and that's what we study in theater, it's to understand that dynamic, that structure and that dynamic. And in this dynamic comes the actor. Uh, and what is an actor? What is an actor? 
And I say a mediator is the four roles. A mediator is actor, director, playwright, and audience. First of all, the mediator is an observer. We observe the conflicts. That, that's why the magic lantern of the theater allows us to have a, an overview, a deeper view, and, a, a, and to take a distance from the conflict. We are apart from <clears throat> the scene. So first of all, we are an audience, but also we are uh, directors, of course, because we conduct that conversation there are directors who are more uh, strict um, directives, and there are others who are more, uh, I prefer that, that second kind, uh, <clears throat> like uh, to leave the conversation go and uh, flow, I mean, and just to make uh, interventions in some moments, but some very uh, uh, puntuales, we say. Um, I don't know the word. At the right, okay, something like that, at the right time, at the right time, at the right yeah, time. At the right time, the opportunity, yeah. yes, exactly. Uh, so let's talk a little about the mediator as an actor. What is an actor? An actor is a a person who is prepared to uh, uh, become another person. So it's a person who is prepared and trained to uh, become, in a, of course, in a fictional way, uh, a character. So that's great. The actors, we can be Everybody, we are rich. <laughs> we are also poor, but we are rich. <laughs> uh, and, and that's unbelievable. But to be many people, <laughs> we have to be open. <laughs> it, our mind has to be open because if we judge <laughs> every character we have to represent, we, can, we will not be able to become the character. So we have to feel, or we have to try to feel as the character. That's what the, the great master, uh, the Russian master Stanislavski said, the, the, the question is, we have to ask ourselves is the if. If I was that person in that circumstance, how would I, re would I react? What would I do in that situation? So, uh, if I was Hitler, <laughs> but no, I, this is the worst. How can I become Hitler? No, it's fiction. But the mediator has <clears throat> to have that skill because he has to understand how the person thinks and feels because otherwise he won't be able to help him or to help the other people. Uh, <clears throat> An actor has to be present in the here and now. He has to uh, navigate in the moment to moment rea react, uh, reality. So that's why uh, the, the active listening is fundamental for the actor. Also, <clears throat> the expressive skills uh, the generation of empathy uh, from both sides. He has to feel to be empathic, but he also has to create the empathy of the people who are with him. 
the creativity, that is the ability of thinking outside the box, the imagination, not being afraid of, uh, <clears throat> of going uh, uh, far away from the uh, binary, binary thinking. We have to combat, combat the binary thinking. We, we have to uh, not censor ourselves. <clears throat> always looking for alternative exits. Not the first exit we see is the only exit we, we will find. That is a common knowledge of actors and mediators. Uh, that's why my, my goal or my message is to everybody to understand the importance of being formed uh, uh, as an actor to become a good mediator. At least to understand the importance of <clears throat> uh, internalizing uh, or um, taking some of the actor skills. <clears throat> the capacity or the ability of feeling but also at the same time, the ability of taking distance from the problem that we are listening to or that we are observing. <clears throat> so that is, uh, I think, um, some of the, of, of the abilities of the actors. There are many, um, I remember, uh, um, I assisted to a, a lecture of uh, here in Buenos Aires uh, of the actor uh, Jonathan Price, a well-known uh, actor who, uh, when they asked him, what is acting for you? He said, <clears throat> acting for me is reacting. So that is the presence we have to have in the communication, in the present communi communication with people, uh, the ability to react. And there are many ways of adaptability to the, the others, other people's actions. One of them is uh, to avoid what we don't like, to escape. The other one is to react and to, uh, I, I would say, a company. And there is another uh, who is one step away, who is to transform, going from the, the adaptation, one step more is to transform the reality. Are we able to use the force that we are uh, receiving from the other people to transform the reality and uh, to propose. It's a challenge. It's not uh, easy, but to propose something else. <clears throat> well, the expressive skills help us for that. Perceptive skills, listening, feeling, the sensorial, uh, with, with all the senses, uh, observing and the expressing. We talk, we talk with, with uh, not only with our words, and the words have lots of meanings. What does a word mean means to me? And maybe it's something very different to you especially if we are talking in, in different languages and we have problems of translation that, but we always, even if we talk in the same language, we, we always have that problem of, of meaning, of different meanings we, we use and we, uh, the interpretation, I mean. Uh, and also we talk with our bodies, with, with our gestures, with our 
ways of looking, uh, the importance of silence and the poses are uh, very, very studied in, in theater. And I think it's, it's a matter of mediation. Why, at least in my country, maybe it's cultural. I don't know in, in your country, Vik Vikram, you could tell me about that. But in my country, uh, we are very used to talk and talk and talk, and we don't like to, we don't like silences. We don't like pauses. We need to feel the pauses. Why? Why? That's a question I ask myself. And when I teach uh, actors, I always say, wait, take your time, listen. Listen to the other people and listen to yourself. What are you feeling in this moment? And <clears throat> think before talking. I don't know. What do you think about that? So culturally, <coughs> whatever, whatever is applicable to Argentina is applicable to India. Culturally, I think we are the same. So <laughs> everything... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay uh, because what you be, said is will be apl absolutely <laughs> applicable here <laughs> okay well uh, something something else uh, i want to tell you is you no know, well, there are so many things i'm just trying to to put two or three ideas just to uh, uh, to show you uh, a, a world that is very uh, challenging. Uh, he's becoming bigger here in Argentina. I have my. <clears throat> uh, it's called. It's it's my uh, my creation, <laughs> especially when the pandemic pandemic began. Is the. Uh, Theater laboratory laboratory for mediators. It's a <clears throat> it's a virtual space uh, where we can meet people from every part of the world. Of course, many uh, most of them are from Argentina and uh, uh, the neighbors countries like Uruguay, Chile, Brazil. But we also had people from other countries. And <clears throat> it's, uh, it's a space where we research this kind of things, relations between theater and mediations. We, <clears throat> we explore, for example, different kinds of narratives, uh, the the texts and subtexts that's, that are always in every narration or every narrative. Um, we try to remove layers, like the layers of, of the onion, to remove layers because of the, the unmasking process shouldn't be uh, to expose the person who is uh, um, narrating uh, with impunity, because if, if he feels <clears throat> that he's uh, uncovered, uh, he this he will have a feeling of being uh, like um, forced. So we have to help people in a gradual process of removing layers from that onion that is the person, the masked persons. Um, in that, in that uh, laboratory, we, <clears throat> so not only we research together and we have good productions now, but also we, we act, I conduct, uh, the mediated stories, which are uh, recorded by Zoom. And in that uh, stories, we, we show uh, <clears throat> uh, the, act, the, the actors with 
all the actors, every actor is a mediator. So I um, in, invented the word mediator, mediator and mediactress. It's a new word invented, <laughs> invented by me. And the mediators and mediactresses <clears throat> um, play a story uh, um, taken from reality, from a, a real story. And uh, they not only show the mediation, but they show the conflict between each other. And then they go to a mediation and the mediator is a well-known mediator in, in our country, in Argentina, who interacts and recreates like a real mediation, but the mediator of the mediator, of course, knows that these are actors, but he doesn't know or she doesn't know anything about the conflict. So we have a very good material, and now it's in Spanish, but we can do it in English, of course. Uh, it's a very good material where we can see the conflict and analyze and study the conflict, uh, the behaviors of the, of the actors, of the subjects of the conflict, the communication, the escalation, how do you say, when, when the conflict Escalate, yeah. uh, grows, the escalation, uh, and when, when it's descends, descending. And we also have the access to the mediation, the uh, preconceived ideas that people have of mediation, the mediation itself, the whole process of mediation, and then in the end, uh, some monologues of the parties uh, who reflect like in a theater monologue about what they felt during the mediation and how they feel after the mediation. And also, there, there is some interaction between the mediators who acted there and me as a conductor of, the, uh, of that uh, play. So that is, a, I think it's an interesting material that uh, me and other professors use in the universities and the, student, and the students are very, very interested in that kind of material because they find it very uh, uh, lively, <laughs> you know. So what we have to do uh, one is that part of the now a skill development project is what I'm putting together. August onwards, we have those sessions. So please, we will do this as part of that. Put it, however, okay. You put it. And it can be Spanish and English. We'll do separate sessions. And how okay. it has to work, we'll have to just, because I'm trying to put it out as to say, whoever have, wants to do that session, can he even put out what they want to charge for it? That's totally up to you. That's your wish. And that goes okay. to you. So we'll get, that's okay. That's what we put together. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes, we, we'll talk about that. Uh, and um, the other thing uh, I wanted to, to tell you and to share with you is that in that laboratory, we, the, the media actors and media actresses also just play, play for the pleasure of playing and researching in their inner selves. So it's a way to develop their uh, actors' abilities. Um, we can share, uh, it's an idea comes to me in this very moment, uh, that experience uh, with some of the uh, participants of this laboratory, the laboratory who will be very glad to participate. And now we are planning a, a, a congress, like a little congress in the in the country, 
in Argentina, where we will meet many people uh, don't know each other. They, they only know virtually in, in this uh, situation, but they will be uh, meeting personally and we will have workshops about this kind of things. And we also will have theaters and uh, <clears throat> studying uh, uh, spaces. And the other thing I, I wanted to tell you is that with a, a, a colleague, a dear colleague of mine, a very a wonderful mediator, my friend, Maria Elena Karam, uh, <clears throat> author of, of books, uh, of mediation books, we share uh, the, some uh, courses and workshops we conduct uh, for mediators in activity for, especially for family mediators. And we use, we, in, in, every, in each course, we use a book, a play from a playwright. For example, Tennessee Williams, we took the glass menagerie, a street card named Desire, something unspoken. And in every, in every play we talk, we take a subject, for example, text and subtext, or we take the, uh, the different kind of families just to open our minds or the use of uh, secrets. Um, there, there was a, a play called um, Betrayal from Harold Pinter. Uh, there's the Pinterian pose. We analyzed the sense of the pose and the silences we had uh, Ibsen's Doll's House, where we, uh, we, we studied and we explored the role of uh, the, the, the typical family from the 19th century and um, the role of women and the new roles challenge here in Argentina is changing every day. Family is not what it was. Uh, we have we had also Dario Fos, uh, Nobel Prize, open couple, who disrupts the idea of the traditional couple. Uh, <clears throat> we had Garcia Lorca, uh, the the Spanish poet and <clears throat> playwright, uh, and, and we studied Bernarda Alba's house, a very a uh, strict family and mother uh, with um, where we studied the, the cultural influence for the relationships and how the family is um, many times um, compelling to, to be like in a prison <laughs> um, uh, and enables to interact with the society, with the outside world. World. And uh, Pirandello's Six Characters in Search of Author. It's a very good, another uh, <clears throat> Nobel Prize. It's a very good play who talks about theater itself and all what theater can do. So the, the subjects there's are, there are. Um, reality and fictions, the problem of communication, the, the difficulty to communicate uh, one another because it's impossible to know <laughs> the other people because we are masked. Uh, <clears throat> the fiction in life, uh, the idea of, of um, person and character, the, which is a, a, a dilemma, dilemma and a, a, it's not always so easy to double person and character. It's, we need to double person and character, but we are not always able to do that. So that and many other things. I don't want to 
uh, annoy you and bother you, you with never, so many concepts. No, please. I never get bothered. It's so nice to listen <laughs> to this. It's a much wider perspective that you get. So that definitely is important. We had just one comment. But there was, of course, Gilbert. He's in Luxembourg. And he says, I'm completely with... He's completely with you. Mediation and drama goes together. Then there's Laura... She's I actually she's in Italy and she doesn't really speak English. I would I actually sent him a Zoom link to them to come in also. So she says people in mediation tell their perception of the facts, the vision of the truth. I agree with Juan. Pauses are used to reflect above all to listen. We need to reflect on what we hear, on our emotions and those of others. So that's mm-hmm. the comment. So, okay. So now okay. what we but what we have to look at, Juan, is that mediation as a theater, but the script. The playwright is writing the script as you go lo- go along. Is that what's happening? Uh, uh, the playwright is writing the script as I'm sorry as it's going along as the play is ah. going along. <laughs> oh yes, there, there's something that is is a, a strict part because the the as you say the play is written. So I have a book. <laughs> I have to study my part. If I was an actor who needs to play a role and I cannot uh, go apart from that. So um, I think the challenge is to try to understand the text and the subtext. What is written? For example, when it says, uh, I don't know, I want you to get up. No. To, to take uh, the part of the, the glass menagerie from Tennessee Williams, when the mother, Amanda, says to his, her son, uh, Tom, rise and shine, rise and shine. It, it, it says, it, it's a common phrase, but if we understand the character, that desperate mother, who has been uh, abandoned, we say abandoned, abandoned by uh, uh, her husband uh, some years ago. And she puts all her expectations in her son, but she is afraid that her son is possibly going to leave home to go away and sail like his father. And then what does mean rise and shine? Or when she says something like, when you go to your work, please go and get some friend, some companion, and bring it home because I want him to meet Laura. Laura is the daughter, Tom's sister, and she has a little problem, a physical problem. So this mother is very afraid. So how do we, uh, uh, I'm sorry, what do we interpret or what do we think about some uh, phrases that we hear or, or that we listen. Uh, I, uh, let's let's uh, move to mediation, from theater to mediation, to another play, <laughs> another play. And uh, let's imagine that Amanda, the mother, is about uh, to be, uh, how do we say, uh, desalojada. Uh, uh, she, she rents the apartment and uh, she's on the limit and they want, she, can, she cannot afford the rent. So the lawyers come and said, you have to leave. I don't know the word in English, I'm sorry. Um, so, okay, the word I mean to evict. Oh, her. 
to evict her. Evi so, evict her. The, evict. the eviction. eviction. So, an eviction mediation. Okay? So, when Amanda says, um, I cannot pay, I need please uh, three months to uh, it, 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 please stand by me, wait, and in three months, I will try to make a pay a planning, something like that. That is the a phrase, that is a, an option, a possibility that this part of the mediation uh, says, you know, uh, transmits, but that is only the text. There are things uh, behind, there are things below, there are feelings, there are uh, interests, there are concerns, there are um, fears. So all of this is part of the play that we have to conduct. And that to, to put it in a simple way, but as, I'm sorry, but as a, a family mediator, I have um, lots of subjects which could be real plays, uh, battles between uh, siblings. They conduct like, or they act like children. And they're talking about money and uh, inheritance, but they conduct like children. So we have to play like if we played with children. So it's a play, but it's a serious, it's a serious play. <laughs> yeah. Because I was trying to create an analogy between the script writing, how you have the characters, they have a certain, they have the idea of what the characters are. They know their characters because they are the characters who come in as the participants. Uh Sorry, the, the actors? The act, I'm saying the people in dispute look at them as the actors. They have ah, their, okay. so they have their, they know their character because they are the characters. So they come with their character. The only thing is they don't have the words in the sense they can speak, but if they get the right words, so mediator as a playwright is getting the right words out, <laughs> what they want ah, them to okay. say. So it's evolving okay. as you go along. And the playwright so, does it. <laughs> yes. I'm trying to create that kind of an analogy there. Yes, <clears throat> that's a very good analogy. I, I think you are, you are thinking uh, in a double role of the mediator as a, a playwright and as a conductor or director, because as a playwright, he has to put the words exactly. <laughs> for the characters. Yes, that I understood now. <laughs> and as a conductor, he has to, uh, <clears throat> how do you say, oh, come on, speak. Exactly. <laughs> say it. <laughs> but something, something more about that, I think it's interesting because uh, I said that uh, in, in the in the media in the stage on stage the mediation as a theater uh, people go and they become a character for example i am the desperate mother or i am the bad father <laughs> or a uh, husband or uh, usually people use the victim as the, the main character, the, the, the character that we constantly find in mediation is the victim. I am the victim and you are the bad person. I am the good and you are the bad. The binary uh, logic. No? The, uh, mediators have to uh, go against that uh, logic. Um, people go to mediation with a constructed character that they uh, imagine will be useful for their goals. <laughs> but 
uh, as the other person is doing the same, but in the opposite side, <laughs> their goals will not be accomplished as they wanted to. So uh, that's the battle uh, who happens in that drama that is mediation. <clears throat> so I think that uh, what happens in mediation, uh, I'm nowadays studying little uh, this, what happens in mediation is uh, that struggle of characters. And the definition of the character is that there is a mask. It's a person masked or who has a, a veil, we say, something that covers myself. So I'm not showing myself, I'm not showing you myself, I'm only showing you my mask, my character. So <clears throat> mediator's um, work, part of his work is to unveil, to unmask. Uh, as I said before, uh, not with impunity, but uh, slowly in a process uh, of removing layers. And <clears throat> if we do not, remove or help, uh, it's better to say help to help people to remove themselves, their layers, at least one or two layers. Because the onion, if, if, if we use the image of the onion, uh, that, that is well written in Pierre Gint's uh, Ibsen play. Uh, the idea of of the person as an onion who has different layers. And we, this is the, the emperor, this is the powerful, and this is the working man, and this is the, the desperate man. And the problem with the onion is that if we to take out all the layers, there's nothing. <laughs> so, some layer it's the idea of the process of the process because human beings are a mystery but some layers is to to have some um, capacity of encounter between persons so leave the character aside and let the person encounter ourselves and allow me to say something for just i should be ending uh, i remember um uh, recently i had a mediation we had it we now we in argentina almost every mediation is in by this uh, <coughs> a modality by zoom Yes, so uh, the, the, the challenge is to try to uh, leave the layers and it's not easy in this context, in this spiritual scene that we are used to. So I think we have to think about that. Right. I'm After, Okay. Uh, so uh, just just to finish yeah, yeah. Uh, after after five or six uh, uh, meetings we had by zoom in in a family mediation um, I decided to invite them to my uh, my office uh, the presential encounter and it's like soldiers that that's the image I had when they it was very, very uncomfortable for them, but they accepted. After some refusals, they accepted and they, they went to my office. And it was funny because one of them was, uh, <clears throat> it was a sister-in-law who was, it's an eviction theme. And uh, she was with a friend, with a sister, with a lawyer. They were four people 
from one side and two people from the other. It was like uh, prepared to enter the scene. And when the conversation began, the layers fall and fall and fall. And finally, they could talk of the, the history of their lives a little. Not to make an analyze of their life or to make a playwright, but to reach an agreement. <laughs> and they could reach an agreement which I think will be uh, uh, how do we say uh, sustainable something like that. Uh, so and it, 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 what I want to say is that we don't have to forget the presential scene the presential theater which is it's not possible to replace him and to say to the final phrase is I prefer to go to the theater to see the person and not seen by Zoom. <laughs> so I would like to meet you in person. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. But <laughs> Thank is, you very is, much. But this, I, I found this quite nice. I mean, the cinema hall that we have created in our lives, at least <laughs> good part is you can actually put it up where you want. Now you don't have to put the theater up. You can get the characters in when, from wherever in the world you want. I like I like this. I like my cinema quite a bit. <laughs> now the cinema is is very good. It's very good, and it's the opportunity we have to to meet people from different parts of the world. Yeah. And the, uh, let me tell you one. What I how I look at the cinema is that because there is this much of a screen and this much of the person, you actually are more involved with the person rather than the whatever the other accessories that are, come with a person is now it's the person only so i find that to be a better aspect of the human interaction so you're interacting with yeah. the person that's what i like with the person you're actually without the uh, of course ah, with the person the, yeah of for course. The cook, you are a theater person you need we can focus yeah you, you're the theater person you need costumes and you need uh, props and everything here there are no props okay some people do put some no props, props at the back <laughs> but yeah oh i don't like that <laughs> yes uh, what, you have to prepare your face yeah, and your it. face me, uh, says a lot even if you are in silence your eyes <laughs> Yeah. Um, and the tone of your, voice. I think the tone of voice. The tone, the tone yeah. of voice, of course. Makes a lot of, of course. Yeah. The, the difference, um, it's like music. Exactly. Like music. It's like an orchestra also. You can put crescendos <laughs> and silences. Yeah. We and have the, to focus on that. And the good part is that over time, we are going to pick up more from the tone of voice than we earlier were, were because that's whatever look the human mind is is going to pick up from whatever material you give it so now we are giving it this so it'll pick up more and become pick up the nuances of it maybe read people based on that but but the important yes. thing that you said which i liked was the aspect of the mediator getting into the characters but not judging without judging when you get into the character i think that's that's an important which a theater person can be can do i mean that's the way you are supposed to you're not judging the character you become the character exactly you know an actor uh, in in theater we always say that the actor has to be in love yeah. with his character <laughs> because if the actor judges his own character he won't be able to represent it or to act it like if he was, because you have to show that you are that person. Absolutely. Uh, and so it's a play, of course. <laughs> yeah, but it's an important aspect because to be able, when you get into the into that character and to, without judging, look at the circumstances and everything of that character, and from yes. there, then write the script from there because now you have to write the script also. <laughs> so you take yes, the script and, accordingly. <laughs> yes, of course. And imagine the the the, the <clears throat> uh, for the mediator for, for his job. It's it, it, we are like bridges. We are bridges, uh, and we have to 
understand one part, we have to understand the other part and go from one side to another. Constantly, we have to exert our flexibility. Yeah. So there's lots of things. <laughs> lots of things, and we have to take these up in your in the skill development project. You have we have to create those sessions that we have to do. We'll yes. Maybe we'll talk about that when you have time, because I find yes, that... yes, of course, I, I'd be glad to. I'm working now in in. Uh, trying to put in in order my <laughs> my ideas. I'm writing something, but it's not ready. Uh, so I hope my book will be ready. Uh, in I hope for this year or the beginning of next year. <laughs> but this, but, but I think uh, this is a very interesting topic. I think the very interesting what you, what you can do with it is very interesting. So what interesting things can come up in relation to this is actually, I think it would be nice to see what we can do. So we must work on that. We must work on that. Okay, we, we should. Yeah. I'd be glad to. Vikram, thank you very much for this invitation. I, it was a pleasure for me. It took one year, one year to get you here, but we did. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I'm so sorry about that. But here, here I am. <laughs> very, no, it's very nice and I'm telling you this is really an area which we need to explore and get people into this there'll be lots of interest there but please of try course. and attend other sessions if you can if you could drop I it. will do <clears throat> I will do my best but, uh, oh I'm glad because I could understand <laughs> I could I, I thought because of your accent that uh, I, I'm used to American accent <laughs> but because I never even I don't even know whether we have an accent we just take the <laughs> word and we pronounce it like that. We don't even, I don't even know whether I have an accent, but of course, everyone has their way of speaking. But, but last day of the conference on the 30th of June, please join that session, which starts at 7.30. Yes. Yeah. Uh, which, what's the day? 30th. 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 Okay. 30th June. Okay. Okay. Your <laughs> session today started at 8.30 India time. That one is at 7.30 India time. So one hour before what you came in. So, okay, yeah. okay, perfect. So, That's so, perfect. So, well, a pleasure, a pleasure, Juan, a pleasure speaking to you and for me too. And let's keep in touch, absolutely, absolutely. We're going to do some interesting sessions, uh, workshops, workshops. Yeah, we can do some workshops. Yeah, workshops. Exactly. Okay, <laughs> that's right. that's right. 